read in the parsha about the brochus that Yaakovin had given to his sons, understanding the potential of each one of his children to guarantee, to actualize each of their abilities, it was articulated through the bracha, which guaranteed it should manifest itself as it was meant to be. Two of his sons, Yisach and Zvulun, he had created a partnership between the two of them that Zvulun is fully responsible, yeah. responsible for all the material needs of Yisach. That Yisach has no need to worry or to be distracted regarding any material responsibility. This was Yisachar's bracha that he could be fully focused on his spirituality. Zvulun, because he had the capacity to understand and appreciate the value of Yisachar, he'd be fully dedicated. And as Chazal tell us, ho yisam ochel b'piyam shel Yisachar. It was to the degree they would actually, would spoon feed Yisachar that there was no effort whatsoever needed by Yisachar to attend to their physical amenities. This was the relationship which Yaakov had established between Yisachar and Zvulun. This concept to create a partnership where the Yisachar should not be distracted, in essence, it was really, the concept was Yitzchok's concept. As the Sephardo learns, the reason why Yitzchok wanted to give the bracha to Esav, Yitzchok not knowing the true nature of Esav, that he was a Russia, that he was evil, he believed and he understood, of course, if Yaakov Ishtam Yoshiva Holim, he dedicated his life only to Torah, nothing but that, so what's even the consideration to give the bracha to Esav? He's a shodeh, he's a man of the field, he's a hunter. So the Shvaru explains, because he misunderstood, he didn't understand who Esav was because of his level of deceit and guile and deception. He believed he was a tzaddik, but he would be the one who would be responsible, fully responsible for the material needs of Yaakov. So Yaakov would be the Yisachar, and Esav would be the Zvulun. But of course, Rifki Menu understood, and it was immediately communicated to her, that Yaakov must go immediately and take the bracha. All I kill us as the Targum explains, it was been the was through prophecy. So Yaakov is only now understanding the value of that due to us what his father wanted to accomplish. Mm-hmm. He's establishing mm-hmm. this relationship between Yisach and Zvulun. The Mark tells us the end of Subis that the only person who's going to be resurrected at the end of time is only the person who has Torah. If a person has no Torah, he will not be resurrected. He has mitzvahs, he will not be resurrected. The tal the do which brings, which reactivates the human being and brings it back to life, the tal is Torah. So the Lord says, so what about the Amaratzim? The people not engaged in Torah study? You mean to say they're not going to merit tchiyas amesim? Because even the Amoritz, although he wasn't a Torah scholar, and many things he didn't do 100% correctly, but he still was a law-abiding Jew, citizen. So Mar says that because they're Marzike Torah, because they support Torah, although they don't study Torah, they have a share in Torah, that will be the Tal That will be the do that will resurrect them. So here in this week's parsha, the Sephora says something phenomenal. The whole concept that a Baruch Hu gave, there's such a thing as known as Madness Kuna and Madness Levia. We have to give certain gifts to the Kohen. Certain tithes have to be given to the Kohen. Meiser, the 10% of one's grain, one's produce has to given to the Levi. Since Levi and the Kohanim, their essence, they're dedicated only for a study of Torah and serving Hashem, they the efficiency of Hashem. So every Jew who gives the Truma and the Meiser and the other various gifts to the Kohen and to the Levi, they are actually supporting Torah. So although the Amoretz, as the Gemara says in Psochim, Rabbi Kiva said that when he was in Amoretz, his hate for a Talmud Chok was, such, was to such a degree that he would want to bite him kid shichas chamor. Normally, if an animal bites a human being, it's a flesh wound. When a donkey bites, not only does he bite through the flesh, he breaks the bone. That was the intensity of, 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 of dislike and hate that the Amarats Mahaps and Talmud Chachom does make it, but they gave truma. They did tithe their crops. Meiser, the Gemara says they did not, but Rova Amarats and Marasim, the vast majority did. But because there was a significant minority, therefore Chazal said, when you buy the produce from the Amoretz, from this kind of person, you have to, it's called demai, you have to tithe it. 
But truma for sure, they definitely gave truma. As a result of that, even the Amoritz, who in behavior did not behave properly, nevertheless, he was a participant in the sport of Torah, therefore he also merits Trias mm-hmm. HaMesim. Mm-hmm.